Welcome back. We're talking about whether the violence and extremism espoused by jihadist groups is a warped distortion of Islam. Joining us from Tampa is author, journalist, and activist Azra Nomani. She's the co-founder of the Muslim Reform Movement. Azra, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. Now, when we talk about groups like Islamic State and Al-Qaeda, terrorist groups, really, and their relationship to Islam, one of the explanations we often hear is that what these groups do has got nothing to do with Islam. They're basically a bunch of criminals, a bunch of thugs carrying out this kind of violence for their own ends. But in effect, has Islam been hijacked by groups like Al-Qaeda and Islamic State? Yeah, I think we're really doing ourselves a disservice when we don't talk about the Islam and Islamic State. The Islamic State and all the militant groups around the world rely on a theology of Islam that is very real and very dangerous. I mean, we are in an existential ideological battle. It is the battle of our lifetime right now, and we have to win it with honesty and clarity. And so for me, these Islamic State radicals, the militant groups in Pakistan and in other countries around the world, they are criminals, they are murderers, they are thugs, and they unfortunately rely on an interpretation of Islam that is very real and we must defeat it. So the challenge then, as you have argued, is that Muslims have to take back their religion from groups like Islamic State. How do Muslims go about that? Well, what happened is that in the development of Islam into the 21st century, we have had the emergence of an interpretation that is called Islamist. Islamist is separate from Islam in that Islamists want political governance. And what we have to do is challenge all of the theologies that depend on this vision of a caliphate or an Islamic state. And you know where that begins? It begins with the government of Saudi Arabia. It's out of the government of Saudi Arabia that we have had exported to the world this theology of Islam. Another word that I really hope your listeners can understand is this word called Salafism, because the ideology of Saudi Arabia is called Salafism. It means that they are trying to go back to this very literal reading of the Quran, and that literal reading is very problematic when it comes to issues of crime, war, women's rights, minority rights. And so to take back the faith, what we are doing is challenging those interpretations and putting forward a new vision based on peace, human rights, and secular governance. Now, over the past few months, we've seen these cases of insidious racism, Islamophobia, as it's sometimes called. We see that even articulated by people who are running for president. How does one counter that? Well. It's funny that you use that word insidious because I actually believe that the penetration of this ideology of Islam that is about political governance is very insidious in its arrival in the West. And so how do we counter it most effectively? I believe we most effectively counter these negative perceptions about Muslims by simply practicing an ideology of Islam that is honorable. Nobody will have anything bad to say about us if we actually police ourselves, if we police our mosques, if we police our countries, if we police our communities and rid ourselves of this extremist interpretation of Islam. And ultimately, I feel like Muslims have a responsibility to stand up to this extremism, not just with shallow condemnations, but with a challenge to the actual ideas that are behind this extremism. And that means going back to the heart of Islam, to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and going back into the hearts of our own lives and our own souls and standing up for this idea of coexistence that we really believe Islam practices and preaches. Azra Nomani, thanks for being with us.